Mate, congratulations on the the movie and my heart is thoroughly warmed now. <laughs> yeah, it's like really fun and thank you. Really, really sweet movie. Yes. Um, well, tell us a little bit about your character, um, Sophia, and what you enjoyed about in- inhabiting her. I loved I was I was I was wrapping my third our third season of Batwoman and I loved how light she felt. I think that coming from an action kind of darker show to a character that is just very just like there and light and free and loving, it felt like, oh, I like this. This is kind of different. It's a little bit of a breath of fresh air that's kind of shaking things up. And as an actor, we never want to just do one thing. We want to always be able to diversify, you know, our our our, our roles, our experiences. Um, I also loved her style. I didn't know that that was going to be her style um, until I got into the project. And when I went through the fittings, they showed me what they were going for. And I'm like, oh, I've never done this. Like I have on glasses. And she's like very New York Soho. And just this really cute vibe, kind of I don't know, it just it brought me back to when I was living in New York. It was just a beautiful, beautiful palette when it came to like the way that the film was shot and then the way we were styled for the film. So I thought that was really fun. I also was really, really excited to work with um, Hello Sunshine. I was really, really excited to work with Jojo T. Gibbs. We have mutual friends, so we hadn't yet uh, met personally. But then as soon as we did our chemistry read, I was like, oh, I like her. And we've been friends ever since. So it's been a lot of fun. Oh, that's that's good to hear. Yes, I love the way that um, New York looks in this film too, because it's it's where I live, and um, you, you know, there's a, there's a little bit of mo- movie a movie touch to it, but it does feel like the New York that we know as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, depending on where you live. <laughs> yes, <laughs> when, when, when when you go to the posh places, yeah, um, yeah. So tell me a little bit more about um, working with uh, JoJo T Gibbs and creating that um, on screen um, relationship uh, with her, your your wives wives in the movie. It was easy. It was so easy. It was so easy that like we literally like felt like, oh, we need to figure something out to do this again. Like we got to find another project where her and I can work together again because we had so much fun. It like made my day to go play with Jojo on set because she's so funny and our chemistry and our connection is really like fluid. Like it, it, it flowed very like seamlessly. So we in in our scenes together immediately fell into the roles and the characters roles and it was just a lot of fun because I didn't they had already pretty much shot something a lot of things before I came onto the film so it's always kind of that worry when you bring a new actor on like all right it's going to feel cohesive with the the way that the film is flowing and I felt like with Jojo she made it so so easy for me that's that's great to hear yeah and and over the years I think I'm sure we've both watched uh, movies and tv shows where w- we sort of see a character and we think oh this character's sort of reading as queer and we're getting some signals and I love in this movie no that you know their wives they kiss there's no sort of like oh are they aren't they <laughs> and um I just wonder well, what how meaningful it is it for you to create this kind of um screen representation maybe particularly in a holiday rom-com as well yeah, I don't think I've ever done it in a holiday rom-com. I, most of my characters I've played have been queer, but I feel like with this one, putting it in a holiday rom-com, it's just continuing to show our representation in every as, in every aspect. And the the importance of that is like, it creates, it normalizes us, even though we know we're normal, but it's like, it does it for the world to see. And I think that, you know, um, a rom-com especially holiday rom-com that's going to be in the center of everyone's living room everyone you know in their in all parts of the world are going to sit into sit in their living room with their family during the holidays and watch holiday rom-coms and to be able to represent um a character in that in that space as a queer character um that's I, i think that's really dope and as you mentioned, you, you've played queer characters before, and a, a lot of people will have felt seen by characters that you've played and represented by characters you've played. And I wondered, when, when was the first time that you really identified with a character or, you know, felt seen by um, some screen representation? Oh. I would say, like, I don't, I don't know. Okay, I would say... Oh gosh, when was the first time I felt seen? That's such a good question. I I don't know when the first time was. I I just remember little like like 
moments that I, I felt represented. I know that like watching family mem family matters made me feel represented because they were just this healthy, you know, black family on television, having just normal situations that we didn't really get that opportunity to show on television. And then I remember when I saw Clueless and I saw Cher and I said, oh man, like, I feel like that's like the older me. Like I want to, I don't know that it was a representation of me. Maybe it was more of a goal of mine, but that was like something that I felt like connected to. Um, yeah, I would say those two. Yeah, she's such a great character, isn't she, Cher? Yeah, I'm going to go and watch Clueless again now. <laughs> Gosh. Um, and when it comes to holiday movies, do you have a sort of go-to that comes on around the summer year to get you kind of in the... I love Home Alone. The first one, first classic Home Alone. It's one of my favorite holiday movies. Yes, I tend to go uh, back to that one as, as well. And and are you um, a rom-com person? Do you have a sort of um, any favorites that you would go to when you need a, you know, a laugh, cry or a, whatever, you know, uplift? <laughs> you know, my favorite rom-com is Boomerang with Eddie Murphy. And I just, I love it because I always tell this to people, there are so many layers to that film where it, film, it feels like there's, like it, it finishes this one plot and then it moves to this other plot and then it moves to this other plot while there's still one consistent plot happening. So you feel like you're going through like this journey and it's just, it's so funny. It's like, it's so black. It's, it's so sexy. It's just like, and Eddie is just everything in the film. And I, I, I that's my first time. One of the first times I actually ever saw Robin Givens who ended up playing my mom on Batwoman. And it's just like, she's to me acting like a, an acting legend and so to be able to see these 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 legends have fun with each other in the beginning of their career I thought that was really cool but that's one of my favorite rom-coms I have it downloaded on Prime I have it downloaded on Netflix I have it downloaded on every streaming service so that whenever I'm visiting I'm out of town I can still play it on my computer and lay down and go to sleep Oh, that's that's great to have something you can rely on like that, that you know, yeah. <laughs> I know all the words, all the songs, everything. <laughs> and and can I ask you, what's your favorite piece of LGBTQ plus culture? So it could be um, a movie, a TV series, a book, theater, um, music, just a piece of culture or a person who um, identifies as LGBTQ plus, someone or something that's had an impact on you and resonated with you over the years. Yeah, yeah. Um... I would say, <clears throat> music-wise, I'm obsessed with Kehlani. She knows that. I say it all the time. <laughs> um, I, I I love, yeah, that's one. <laughs> Might have a little crush. Um, and television. Um, oh, I, you know what? I actually like Yellow Jackets. I have a really close friend that's on there, and her character is queer, Jasmine Savoy Brown. Um, and she is as well which is I, I love when we're able to be ourselves or play ourselves in certain aspects um movie wise oh I would have to think I feel like anytime I have to think off the top of my head of things that I have to remember I don't do that well at it but w those... was there an early one that you saw that maybe struck you or or it could be something more recent too well Clueless was like one of the first times I saw queer characters in a film and and realize what was going on I was just like oh he's gay <laughs> like I love it you know what I mean like that was the first time I remember seeing queer characters as a child um in in a film uh, oh and then, I don't know if you remember this movie with Queen Latifah called set it off no I haven't seen that yeah first of all that's a classic you should see it okay <laughs> There is her her character is gay in the film, and man, that film was just so epic. It was so good, and she's so phenomenal in it. Like, give that woman should have gotten an Oscar for that performance. She's yeah. so phenomenal in it. So yeah. Well, Javita and Leslie, thanks so much. Congratulations on something from Tiffany's, and great to talk to you. Thank you, James.